This video is about unboxing and setup of a Biogram 4000 after restoration. At the end of the video we'll also give a brief demo of the main features of this model. For more information about restorations please visit my blog at biolover.blogspot.com or go to my website at www.biolover.com. When I ship a Biogram turntable I usually pack the platter and the belt separately. So that's what you see here. Once you open the box, uh, there is first the platter and the belt after removing the top layer of the foam. After removing the foam pads, you see the inner box that contains the biogram. Now it's time to take the inner box out and open it up. And so you'll find the biogram wrapped in bubble wrap. After carefully removing the bubble wrap, it's time to open up the biogram and take out the foam pad that protects the interior. This is what you will find under the foam pad. So now it's time to take off all these tape strips. And it's very straightforward with most of them. However, with these two here, you need to be very careful because the keypad panels, they can easily come off if you don't hold them down while removing the tape strips. Before we can play our first record, we need to put in the platter and the belt. And that is done by removing the aluminum panels so we can put the belt around the motor. And the first step to do here is to pull the plinth forward that unlocks the aluminum panels. Sometimes it can be difficult to move the plinth forward. If that's the case in your biogram, then it's time to turn it around and have a look at these tabs here. These tabs are meant to lock the plinth in place, but over time they typically wear out. So if they're still in force, you need to push them out with a screwdriver and then you can push the plinth forward. It's usually best to take out the small plate first. And you just saw it, it simply lifts up here on the side and then you can pull it out. The next step is to lift out the large plate. Before we put in the platter and the belt, we need to unlock the transport locks, and there are three of them. There's one over here, one up front here, we can't see it, it's behind the enclosure, and then we have one over here. And so with a screwdriver, we simply unscrew those screws in clockwise direction, and that unlocks those locks. So when we put the belt on, it's a good idea to put it around the uh, running surface and then hold it here with one finger and then flip it over to the other side where you can hold it in place while putting in the platter. That's what you see here. So I'm holding here the belt and it's still on the running surface below here, but uh, it's securely in, in place because I put a little bit of tension on it with my uh, fingers. And so it actually stays on there by itself, and so now you can just put on the uh, platter. And now it's about to put the belt on the pulley, and here you need to make sure that it's not twisted. Usually when you have it up here, it always wants to go untwisted, so you need to flip it around once. And that's about it. And now we can put the uh, aluminum plates back in. So the important part here is to make sure that the copper tab is facing the uh, small plate that goes in here. So this should just seat uh, in place. If it doesn't, then you need to pull the plinth forward all the, all the way and then it falls down. So after the uh, large plate is in, we can put in the small one. And so the important part here is to note this uh, fork-like uh, copper tab. And this copper tab is supposed to mate with one of those protrusions that is on the bottom side of the uh, panel. So this is this one here. When you look at it, it's immediately clear. The fork needs to catch this to guide this panel into a place. And so that's what I'm doing here. I put it on this fork and then I make sure that this edge here is actually going above this copper tab that's on the larger plate. And so you saw here now, once it's in, you can simply push it down here on the, on the side and if the plinth is all the way forward, it should just fall into place. Sometimes this uh, needs a little bit of wiggling in order to seat it. So now that the uh, plates are in, it's time to lock them and that is done by pushing the uh, plinth back. So you see here, I push the uh, aluminum plates a little bit down and then I wiggle the uh, plinth back. 
that usually has a little bit of friction and that's on purpose because as I said they need to be locked into place and so the plinths cannot be too loose. So sometimes you have to play this a little bit until you get it back on uh, both sides. The final step is to put the cartridge on. So if you send me your cartridge and you're getting it back then it most likely comes in one of those little BioLover cartridge containers and so you take it out and then you carefully stick it on here. The most important part here in this process is to not bend this tab up or down because they have a tendency to break off. So you see here I put it on and I wiggle it gently a little bit forth and back and but I don't apply any force up or downwards. After the cartridge is on you can plug it in. I recommend to run it from a uninterruptible power supply such as this APC unit. This will help protect the biogram from damage in case there are power grid issues. Time to listen to some music. So when you put on a record the first thing to do is of course to clean it and you can start the platter by uh, simply holding down the 33 key and then you press on and it will find the entry groove. So you can scan forward in two speeds depending on how hard you press down. And then of course you have here the up and down buttons for the arm lift. Same in backward direction. Before I let you go, let me demo playing a single. So you put the single adapter and put the small 17 centimeter disc on there and you clean it like the LP with the 33 button. And then it'll find the record by itself and it also switches to 45 right here. Okay, that's it for today. Enjoy your Biogram 4000. Thanks for watching.